Salutations to those who are young and young at heart. Oremi, Madame Fo. Enyi, Salam Alaikum. Hola, Buena Gente. Bonjour, Legend. Linja, Dumelang. Murigaboto. Muliwanji. Murigaboto. Makadin. Karibu. Makaitawani. Makaitawani. Munotambere. Welcome to Black USDA online platform. This is a place where your soul will find rest. Did you know every Wednesday and Friday at 6.15 p.m. we have consistent midweek prayers. Not only that, during the day from Monday to Friday, if you need a soulful song, please tune into our platform and indeed you'll find rest for your soul. On Sabbath, which is Saturday, we have services from 8.30 right up to 6 p.m. What do you expect to find? We have got the church at study, Sabbath school, music, it's story, story time. Even our little ones, the children, will find solace on Bluffo online worship platforms. Yes, not only are they going to receive a powerful sermon for them, but including the songs, and they'll sing the songs of Zion in the comfort of your home. Yes, you are waiting for the power hour as we receive the beautiful words, the wonderful words that come from the Word of God. In the afternoon, we have got powerful discussions, not only for the young, but even for the old, as we prepare this journey on this planet and before the sundown yes there is a sermon that will usher you into the new week as you listen to god speak to you what are you waiting for tell your friends about it don't forget to join us on youtube and facebook like our page and subscribe to our youtube channel god bless you as we meet on bluff you online worship class Looking down his field, he decides to put a tree in between vines. He digs it, taking out all that is unwanted so that this tree can grow in a way that may be splendorous to many. 
he removes the stones. As he removes the stones, he takes the good soil, puts it down, he waters it. As he waters it, when it is time to weed, he weeds it. As it grows, he takes manure, manures it. As it grows, he does everything that is wanted. He even prunes it so that it grows in a you know, majestic way that everyone when looks would go, wow, look at that tree in between vines. When it becomes a season to harvest, he looks at its splendor from a distance, admiring this tree. He says, well, this is the season to harvest. When he gets close, painful to his sight, he sees no fruit. He looks at the season, realizing and noticing that, no, this is the season. This tree must produce fruit. He then says, it's okay. Let me see what is missing. Let me try and look at what it needs. He then fertilizes it, puts manure, makes sure that, okay, let me just put around it a little uh, thing so that at least the water could be found in it and it may not lose any. The next season he comes, smiles and says, this is the season. This is the time that it must produce fruit. Painful to his sight, the tree bears none. When he goes back again, he finds the same thing and he finds that there is no fruit out of the tree. What am I saying? Our title of our topic is entitled Uniquely Placed. The tree was uniquely placed amongst vines. Looking at the book of Luke chapter 13 from verse 6 to 9, we find the issue of the barren fig tree. The barren fig tree was supposed to produce figs. Everything that it needed was given. When one looks at this scenario, isn't it similar to us? Within the community that we are in, within the place that we are in, we are uniquely placed. But here comes something sad. No fruit comes forth. You go to John's neighbor. Has John told you that Jesus loves you? John says, Pastor, I've been busy. Or the neighbor says, John just says, may I please have water? When you go into town where a person is known, no matter the social part of town that they are in, or should I say the social place that they are placed in, there is no fruit. Some of us are even in WhatsApp groups where messages are spoken and when you read them, dirt comes out. But God uniquely placed you there to produce fruit. It is so painful in this day and age where when you put a Christian and you put 
a person that speaks worldly, there's no difference. It was interesting some time ago where a gentleman alluded a story to me and said, I jumped into a combi from town going to a particular place I will not mention. And uh, this man jumped in, he jumped in with a Bible and uh, beside him was a gentleman with nothing but this man says when they spoke about the world I was at the top of the topic yet they were at the bottom of it all. They were getting information about what was happening. And then the man sitting next to me asked me one question. Where are you going to? He says to him, I answered and said, I'm going to church. He says, but why is it that you speak more of what happens in the world, but less of whom you're representing within this, within this combi? He said, Pastor, from then on, I learned one thing. God puts you in a place uniquely for a reason and a purpose to represent him and not to represent the world. When the barren fig tree was supposed to produce fruit, questions came into my mind. Was this fig tree trying to produce grapes, yet it was supposed to produce figs? Was this fig tree not knowing its purpose, that here where I am, I am uniquely placed to become a rare spectacle to many, that people will say, wow, look at that fig tree. You are uniquely placed wherever you are, where one can say, wow, look at that. Christian, he produces figs, not other fruit. What you don't see is that one thing. The Lord says, I have sent you, but you have other things. When the world turns, you turn. When the world smiles, you smile. But when heaven cries, you don't hear. When heaven calls, your ears are entertained by other things. Christ is looking for a representative now, a representative that represents him in this time and era where the person looks and says, I am here for mission and not for worldly possession. We want to go into the book of Luke since we are speaking about this barren fig tree, Luke chapter 13. Verse 6 to 9, that's where we get it from. Now, here comes the scenario that is interesting. When the fig tree at the third year is spoken to, I mean, is spoken about to the dresser, hear well what the owner of the of the field says. Then he said to the keeper of the vineyard, Look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. In other words, it has become useless. It does not produce anything. Yet it's supposed to produce something. Why is it there? playing around and not producing anything? Why is it there not giving forth what it's supposed to give? He says, it's worth or it's profit. It's profitless. 
Because in, here he says, why does it use up the ground? Why is it just bearing nothing? Now, here comes the thing. The owner of the vineyard doesn't speak to the tree itself, but speaks to the keeper. If the owner would have spoken to the tree, the tree would not be in existence. We are placed, and here comes an interesting thing. When the father speaks to the son, hear what the son says. This is what it says. But he answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year. Also, until I dig around it and fertilize it. What is he saying? Let him alone one more time. That someone will speak to him and say, guess what? You are uniquely placed for a reason. You are uniquely placed for a purpose. This purpose is for you to represent God, not man. He goes on to say, let it alone. This year. In other words, he is standing in between the tree and the father. He becomes, as one would say, the advocate. He says, let this person one more time, let him go back and hear of you and hear what you're saying about what you have for him to do and about your second coming. Let him know that it is time for him to produce fruit. Give him or her one last time. Then he says, but if it doesn't, I'll cut it off. So in other words, I'm going to redo what was done. I will fertilize. I will, I will make someone speak to him about you. I will make someone hear about you. I will make someone know that the mission is now, not tomorrow. I will make someone tell him that it is time for you to represent me, not represent men. My brothers and sisters, you are uniquely placed. I am uniquely placed. Not for anything else, but to represent Christ. Not only by stature, but by character and by doing God's mission. This is the time for us to become mission missionaries. This is the time for us to know that God put us at a particular place for a particular reason. No other reason but to show forth that we are uniquely placed. Whether you're in a WhatsApp group, whether you, you're at home amongst family and some family are, are not part and parcel of your Christian lifestyle, it's time for you to show them who you represent. Because when he will come, believe you me, the trumpet is about to, to sound. The Lord is about to descend. Some of us might not make it because we don't know what it means to serve the Lord and not mammoth. We rather follow the world, yet God says, follow it not. James, in closing, chapter 4, verse 4 says, Do you not know that the friendship of the world... <laughs> now, friends... And enemies are two different things. 
Because when you become a friend to the world, what does that make you to God? An enemy. It says, do you not know that the friendship of the world is in enmity with God? In other words, the world and you must never look alike. The world and you must not have any traits of it. The friendship of the world is in enmity with God. I'm going to read for you just a short passage from our pen of inspiration. It says this in the book, Testimonies to Ministers and Gospel Workers. The deeds done today are transferred to the books of heaven, just as the features are transferred by the artist on the polished plate. They will determine our destiny for bliss or eternal loss and agonizing remorse. Character cannot be changed when Christ comes. Amen, someone. So, your character now must show where you are going. This is the book Testimonies. You can read it, paragraph 429.3. It is time for you to know your place. You are uniquely placed. Not to become a friend of this world. James says that he who loves the world is an enemy of God. It is, start, it is a time now for you to start removing traits of the world. It is time for you and me now to start. Believe you me, I'm not speaking to you alone, but I'm speaking to myself especially to say that it is time for me to start showing whom I belong to and whom shall I serve. Remember, Christ says you cannot serve two masters at once. You'll either love one and despise the other, not love both. That can never happen. The love of money is exceedingly growing, making us uniquely placed in money and not uniquely placed in God. The love of earthly things is growing, making us having no relationship with God because by beholding, greed grows. When you want money, you want more. When you want earthly things, you want more. You are not satisfied with a little. Now I want to pray for someone who will say, Lord, help me to remove the eye, the selfishness, the worldliness, and come forth. Every hour, every hour. Blessed Lord, how much I need thee should be the song that is within. The song that says, just as I am, without one plea, should be the song within me as you render yourself to the Lord. And when you have done so, Make it this way that you may say, I will follow thee, my Savior, wheresoever thy lot may be. And though all men, no matter who it is, may forsake thee, I will still follow thee. This is the time for us to say, Lord, I will follow you. This is the time for us to say, where he may lead me, I will go. For I have learned to trust him so. And I remember it was for me that Jesus died on Calvary. May we pray as we seek the Lord. Blessed Savior, wonderful God, remove self and take your place. Master, when the earth grows strangely dim, help me and the people that are watching to become perfect. Master, knowing that wherever I may be, I am uniquely placed. Whatever I may be doing, I am uniquely placed. Not for any other purpose, but to follow and show you. I am not worthy, neither am I upright. But Lord God, lead me on. Be with me now and forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. i
beep that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood. Died it for me, who caused his pain for me, who him to death pursued. Amazing love, how can it be that the Oh